Welcome back to another episode of Archie Sonic Character Files as we explore the histories of the inhabitants on planet Mobius. In this episode, we take a look at the history of the spellcasting witch known as Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Okay, okay, I know she's not really a character that originated from the Archie Sonic universe, but I'm still doing this anyway. Besides, I figured, when am I ever going to get around to talking about the Sonic and Sabrina crossovers? Right, so crossovers have been a common thing in comic books, and it's always interesting to see two franchises clash together. Archie and Friends meet the Punisher, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meet the Ghostbusters, My Little Pony meets Transformers, and Superman meets the Nesquik Bunny. Archie Sonic isn't really known for doing crossovers, but there was a small handful of them. Like the time Sonic and the Freedom Fighters met random characters from Image Comics. Yeah, that was a thing. Of course, the crossover that most people are more familiar with are the Sonic and Mega Man crossovers. The first one just focused on characters from Mega Man and Sonic games, while the second one featured characters from Mega Man X, Sonic Boom, and many others from different Sega and Capcom franchises. But today, we're just going to focus on the Sonic and Sabrina crossovers. The first time the Hedgehog and Witch would cross paths was in the short mini-special called Archie and Friends A Halloween Tale. Funny enough, I already covered this comic on my Forgotten Media series years ago. But hey, for this video, I'll go over it again. It starts off with Sabrina going to a comic store to pick up some issues. Some kid named Stevie thinks it's weird to see a woman go shopping for comics, and Sabrina tries to surprise him by bringing the Sonic comic to life. But it backfires, and instead they end up inside the Archie Sonic universe for a while, until Sabrina uses her magic to bring them back to the real world, with Sonic and Knuckles being dragged along in the process. Sabrina remembers that she has to attend a Halloween party, so they all go there to blend in with all the other costume guests, while Sabrina phones Salem to help get Sonic and Knuckles back to their world. At the party, Sonic and Knuckles see that the original Botnik is here as well, and they attack him, but it turns out it's just Jughead dressed up in a costume. The story ends with Salem using his magic to send Sonic and Knuckles back to their world and assures the readers that Sabrina later used her magic to make everyone forget that Sonic and Knuckles were there, except Stevie for some reason. The next time Sonic and Sabrina will cross paths again would be in the two-part story Some Enchantra Evening, part one taking place in Sabrina issue 28 from the second series, and part two taking place in Sonic Super Special issue 10. Yeah, they were doing this kind of story split thing even before the Sonic and Mega Man crossovers. It starts off with the evil Enchantra using a computer to see other worlds and universes, and notices Sonic's world, Mobius. So she travels to the planet, kidnaps Sonic, and brainwashes him with her magic to obey her commands to destroy Sabrina and all of Westbridge. He first goes up against Salem, and later tries to charge after Sabrina and Sally, in which Sally was able to arrive in the portal that Enchantra left behind. Sabrina uses her magic to send Sonic far away for a while so that she and Sally can figure out what's going on. Nicole then alerts that Sonic is about to destroy Sabrina's high school, so she teleports herself there to stop him. Sonic ends up having the upper hand with his speed, spinning around her so fast that Sabrina begins to lose oxygen. But the Teenage Witch manages to summon a tree in front of Sonic's path, knocking him out and breaking free of Enchantra's spell. Meanwhile, Sally and Salem find Enchantra's hideout and try to talk some sense into her. She states that Enchantra's portal to their world is still open and threatens to call upon the villains from Mobius to cause havoc in their world. After much discussion and certain things getting cleared up, Enchantra sends Sonic and Sally back to their world to close up the portal and erase their memories of this whole event. And as for Sabrina, well, it turns out the whole deal was just because Enchantra was offended of being referred to as some fictional character in Sabrina's recent essay from a previous story. Sabrina tries stroking her ego, saying that the mortals couldn't comprehend her true power and beauty, which manages to work, and she sends her and Salem back to their home. That was the end of the Sonic and Sabrina crossovers, although there was sort of a third time that these two would meet again. This time in the Archie's Weird Mysteries mini-special, Case of the Haunted Comic Shop. Archie is getting ready to interview the famous monster comic artist, Damien Shockley, for his column on strange things happening. He soon meets Sabrina, who for some reason is now a preteen. Things get even more strange when Damien's monster sketches come to life and start causing havoc in the comic store. Since Sabrina isn't able to use her magic in her current state, Damien quickly draws Sonic, Knuckles, and other superheroes from Archie comics to stop the monsters. After this, the story ends where everything is reset, Sabrina's back to her old self again, and Damien decides to work on superhero comics rather than monster comics. And that concludes the history of the Sonic and Sabrina crossovers. 
Kind of an odd episode, since these are just a collection of stories that aren't really canon to the Archie Sonic universe. I'm not very familiar with the original Archie Sabrina. The most I know about them are from these crossover stories, as well as this compilation book that I got when I was working on this episode. I know it's a franchise that's had many different incarnations over the years in different media, the most recent one being a more darker take from what I've heard. But as for my own personal experience, I'm more familiar with the live-action sitcom back in the 90s and catching a few episodes of the second animated series. Well, from what I've seen in Archie Sabrina, she's a decent teenage character. Anyway, the first crossover is very standard. Magic spell goes wrong, Sonic and Knuckles are stuck in the human world for a while, and it's quickly wrapped up. And despite the name of the title, Sabrina is the main focus in this story. The Archie gang don't show up until halfway. Also, we don't see much of Sabrina interacting with Sonic's world. I think it might have been funny just to see Sabrina use her magic to mess around with Robotnik. Then again, I might be a bit harsh since this is just a short mini-story. But hey, at least it's not as rushed as issue 4 of the official Sonic Forces webcomic, yuck. Some Enchantra Evening is the big one of the bunch, getting the opportunity to not only be fleshed out in a normal sized comic, but also split into two parts. But despite all that, Sonic and Sabrina don't share that much screen time together, let alone battle each other that much. Most of the time it's just focused on Sally and Sabrina teaming up, all while Sonic's under mind control. And all this is happening because Enchantra was pissed off over Sabrina fictionalizing her in some essay, which apparently happened in a previous Sabrina comic so I'll just have to take the word on it. It's interesting that despite the Archie Sonic series always being more serious around this time, they brought back Mike Gallagher to do the writing, and Dave Mann, as the artist for the Sonic-related characters, both known for working on the very early days of Archie Sonic. It looks like Mike is still sticking to his light-hearted style of writing for Sonic that he's known for, and it's kind of neat seeing Dave's artwork for doing Sonic characters that he hasn't done before, like Mammoth Moogle, who's now rocking those aggressive eyebrows. While Interjag just looks dumb. Like, seriously, what's with the mask? It looks like it was designed to look like a mutated pizza box. Also, this is probably the only time you'll see Sally wearing a different vest. I don't know why. Maybe the artist just felt like doing something different. Anyway, the best way I can sum this up is, if you're a fan of the early days of Archie Sonic, then you might like this one. And I'd say this would probably be my favorite if I had to choose one of the three Sonic and Sabrina crossovers. As for the last one, honestly there's not a lot to say. It's more of an Archie and Sabrina crossover, taking place in the Archie's Weird Mysteries universe, which coincidentally that was how I was first introduced to the Archie gang. But yeah, being that it's another mini-comic, it's just okay, even if it's not very Sonic-y. This is something more for the Archie fans, although it does kind of suck that Sabrina doesn't really do much in this story. And Sonic and Knuckles are only in there for cameos. Of course, it also doesn't help that the artists just traced over some of their official artwork from the adventure games for this story. <laughs> Except this one, that panel of Knuckles looks original. Well, that takes care of this character file, so until then, I gotta juice!